Welcome to the Getting Started with GeoStudio video series. This tutorial guides new users through the basics of analyzing airflow with AirW. Similar to the other GeoStudio products, the basic steps of creating an AirW analysis are setting up the analysis properties in the definition view, using the Solve Manager to solve the numerical analysis, interpreting the solved analysis in results view, and viewing and printing the analysis in page layout mode. The project definition involves selecting the basic analysis properties, drawing the model geometry, creating and assigning material properties, and defining the boundary and initial conditions. Details on the project definition are available in the other Getting Started videos. AirW is typically used in conjunction with other GeoStudio products and can be used to analyze the influence of air pressure on water transfer, convective air and heat flow, and gas transport with airflow. This tutorial will review examples highlighting the AirW functionality. The first AirW example considers steady state groundwater seepage into a tunnel given the background water level on the left and right sides of the domain. In the first analysis, water transfer is the only physical process simulated. However, in the second analysis, air transfer is added and the tunnel is pressurized. This additional boundary condition can be viewed in the Define Boundary Conditions dialog. A zero pressure boundary condition has also been applied to the surface of the domain to represent the atmospheric pressure. In the results view, the black arrows illustrate water flow through the domain, and contours may be used to visualize different parameters. The current contours illustrate total head. However, other options are available in the Contour drop down menu. In the second analysis, blue arrows are also present on the domain, indicating airflow. The water flow vectors appear to have decreased. We can confirm this by going to Draw Graph and selecting the plot Discharge into Tunnel. When air transfer is included in the analysis, the total steady state discharge into the tunnel is 0.076 meters cubed per day, where the negative sign indicates mass leaving the domain. The first analysis with only water transfer has a steady state discharge of 0.144 meters cubed per day. Thus, air pressures substantially decreased groundwater seepage into the tunnel. Airflow may also influence temperature in soils. This is often of critical importance when considering the construction of road embankments in regions with permafrost. This example demonstrates the influence of airflow through an embankment on temperatures and permafrost degradation potential. The first analysis provides the initial poor air pressure and temperature conditions by simulating air transfer due to pressure and gravity-driven gradients, and heat transfer via conduction. In the second analysis, the only physical process simulated is heat transfer via conduction. The third analysis includes airflow due to pressure and gravity gradients, free convection of air due to temperature gradients, and heat transfer due to conduction and force convection with air movement. In the results view, the temperature contours are different when air movement is considered in the analysis. The temperature history plot in the draw graph window indicates that the node at the bottom center of the embankment exhibits substantially greater cooling during the winter months when forced and free convection are present in the analysis. That concludes our Getting Started with AirW tutorial video. For more information on creating a GeoStudio analysis, drawing the model geometry, defining materials and boundary conditions, viewing result information, and setting up the printing page, please see one of the other product videos in the Getting Started series. More information is also available in the online help, supporting documentation for AirW, and other tutorial videos available on the GeoSlope website.
Thank you for watching.